the attorney on the, on the witness stand, and, and then after I got through uh, a few preliminary questions, he cut me off. He wouldn't let me ask anymore. He let me ask three questions after well, I got through the preliminary, and he said, that's it. Well, again, was it your case you were bringing the other party in, or was it their case they were bringing you in? Well, it was actually a, a bankruptcy. It was a bankruptcy case, so I had petitioned the court for the bankruptcy case. And you petitioned a tax court or what kind of what, what, uh, bankruptcy case? It was a bankruptcy court. Right, so you have to only, you have to abide by their rules then. So in, in the bankruptcy proceeding, they may allow attorneys to testify for the fiction and law. So if you're the one who petitioned it, you could have modified the rules. You could have said, look, this is my baseball game. Today we're going to run third base, second base, first base. We're not going to run the normal way. So if you're petitioning the court, you've got the right to set up the rules. But if you forget to set up the rules, they're just going to play it the way they've always played it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You've got to bring the rules of the case into the court. At any time. No, no, you got to do it at the beginning because that's a trial by ambush. You got to let the other side know. You can't, they, they can't walk onto the baseball field and all of a sudden they're out because they ran the first base. Like, what the hell's going on here? You, it's a trial by ambush. You can't do that. You got to be fair. You got to let the other side know. And if they miss it, and you sent it to them, and they fail to object to the rules, well then you could just run them over like a freight train when you get there. Because it's like I gave you sufficient notice that this is how we were going to play this game. So if you couldn't be bothered to read this stuff because you're understaffed or underfunded, that's not my problem. No, because they just don't care. All they yeah. got to do is, is run some kind of stupid words out of their mouth and the judge will agree with them. No, because you tell the judge to take notice of the rules because you're the one who established the court. You're the one who... Oh, yeah, yeah, but what I'm saying prior no. to us establishing the rules, they don't have to comply with anything. You have to. No. It's the just a one, one man or one group team. You know, they're all in, in the cahoots together. It doesn't work like, well, I know for me it's never worked like that because I've always had a precipice day or pre-hearing trial and I lay all the rules out for everybody to understand. So the judge knows the rules, the other side knows the rules, this is how we're going to play this game. And this is how we run it. So that when we go to trial, I got rid of all the bullshit stuff in between. We only got two matters in controversy, but we might have had 30. We settled it in a pre-hearing trial. If you're going to go to a bankruptcy thing, the best thing for you to do is ask for a precipice day, which means a pre-hearing trial day. Get all the big nonsense out of the way. And if there's just one thing that you guys can't work out in the judge's chambers between you, the judge, and the other party, say, you know what, let's take it before the jury. We're going to go before a common law court of record. Only the injured party gets to speak. You're going to have to bring the injured man here. An attorney can't speak. Those are the rules. I'm relying on the Ninth Amendment, uh, the uh, Bill of Rights, United States Constitution, Article 9 and Article 7. There is no such thing as the Seventh Amendment. There's no such thing as the Ninth Amendment. There's the Articles of the Bill of Rights. The First Amendment is really the Seventh Amendment. So when everybody says, oh, i got a Second Amendment right, no, you don't. All right. What was the two Articles 9 and what was the other one? Well, I'll just tell you that the Seventh Amendment and the Ninth Amendment. But when you say Seventh and Ninth, the judge knows you really don't know what you're talking about. So if you say the Bill of Rights of the United States Constitution, Article 7, he knows you're talking about a trial by jury. Not a jury trial, but a trial by jury. And if you say, well, I have rights inalienable, inherent rights given to me by God under the Bill of Rights of the United States Constitution, Article 9, I don't know what you're talking about. I had, a, I had a traffic case and I demanded a Seventh Amendment. Uh, Sixth Amendment, uh, when is it, Seventh? You're right, the Seventh. Sixth Amendment is criminal, Seventh is civil. And well, it's a trial by jury that you're looking for. Yeah, well, they're both trial by jury. Sixth Amendment is a criminal trial by jury, and uh, Seventh Amendment is. Uh, and, and this actually was a, 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 when it went up on appeal, it automatically becomes a criminal trial. And the judge tried to say it wasn't a criminal trial, and I said, "Well, look at your notice, the court hearing notice. It says right here, criminal trial." And. Uh, but like I said, if you Google this, you'll, you'll be amazed. Like I said, you'll see yourself, you'll be like, um, you'll say, the Bill of Rights of the United States Constitution, Article 9. And then you type in the Ninth Amendment, and they'll be like identical. It's like, why are they identical? Because like I said, if you read a lot of the older law books, like I do, everything under the Tenth Amendment, anything under the Eleventh Amendment was an article to the Bill of Rights. Everything above the Tenth Article all of a sudden, change the name to an amendment. So it's just, 
it's it's just interesting. It's just funny because, like I said, judges pick up the certain words like that. If you if you're saying uh, in the Bill of Rights, United States Constitution, Article Seven, they say holy sh bananas. This guy knows his because nobody knows that. But but I mean, he's not. He's like, what did this guy just say? And he'll read for reference it. He's like, holy crap. This guy knows more better than I do. Holy bananas. I better back off on this turkey because well, what's he going to do to me in my court? My own, I'm the judge. What is he going to do to me? He's making me look like an idiot. So like I said, when I hear people say, oh, i got a Second Amendment right. No, you're really under the Bill of Rights of the Constitution, Article 2, you have a right to carry a gun. Now, I don't know where you're getting the Second Amendment nonsense from. I don't know if he's trying to confuse you or trying to make you look stupid in court, but you're using the wrong terminology. If you want to talk like a lawyer, if you want to talk like somebody who knows something in court, well, how about you get it right and keep it to like a very simple lawsuit, one page, so that way you know every single word, and that way they can't confuse you and just stick to your words, and stick to your paperwork, don't let them try to get you off your document, just stick to it and say, that's my word, I'm sticking to it, and I'll stick to it till the day I die, until somebody knocks me off my standing, I'm sticking to it. And let them try to knock you off your pedestal. Let them try to knock off your standing. You make a base of your, your standing on citations, laws, codes. You make a basis of your standing upon what they uh, recognize as their law, as their legal system. You know, you can use their codes. You can use their citations. But you've got to modify it into your own terms that you feel comfortable with. And you know what a jury will understand. You don't use all that crazy legal ease like Black Feet versus CIA 90. They don't use that nonsense. You just tell the jury, hey, it's no fair, I'm trying to get this stuff going through this court, and, and guess what? Every time I try to get an idiot, this guy throws it out. This isn't right, they did me wrong, I want to know why. And nobody's giving me an answer, how do you like that jury? When people do that to you, and the jury's like, yeah, yeah. So you got to come down to the jury's level, you got to stop playing attorney, and you got to realize that eventually you want to get in front of the jury, and you want to put on a performance for the jury, and you want them to be like American Idol judges, and give you the thumbs up, and say, hey, you know what, you win. A jury trial is a total joke. They're totally, like to me, they're totally incompetent. But you put on a performance and you win in front of the jury. If you know the law 100% is on your side, then go before a judge.